right now I'm linking with Darren Harper. I think he grew up in like Southeast or something like that. Stopped trapping and started skating. Now he got his daughters out here skating, y'all, and they be killing it. So we pulling up the Freedom Plaza right now in DC. Good, bro. Hey, hey. How you feeling, bro? You good? So how long you been skating? Man, shit. I what? I'm 42 right now, man. I've been skating since I was probably like nine years old, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Started in the trenches, Savannah Tours. Found my first skateboard. Um, so you were skating out southeast with it? Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Had a couple little homies, and you know, things got a little. You know how it go, living in the hood. Couple got shot. Couple got locked up. Couple said, fuck it. I kind of stayed grounded, although, you know, the streets kind of got me locked in. Yeah. Same thing happened for me, but the love for skateboarding was always in my heart, so. That's what took you away from back. the street. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's all right. Yes, sir. You used um, to mess with Pit Crew, right? Yeah, Pit Crew. Uh, you know, they no longer in business, but man, I miss them dearly, man, because uh, it was like a family. You know, we can go down there. They were in Frederick, Maryland, but at the same time, that was the only like skate shop here in D.C. So and they we had, go they out had the demos and all that. Everything, man. Everything. Good peoples, man. Uh, it was like home. So it was, uh, you know, I go down there, man. I mean, you can do everything down there. Like, I might be have some product. You go down there and sell the product. I might go down there sometimes come home with $700. Yeah, that's just right. extra money, just trading shit in and selling to them. So, um, but other things too, man, just like a blessing. Just, uh, they were family. They were some of the key players in helping us get sponsorships. Like, they was locked in with DC. They was actually DC shoes rep. So, when I was trying to get on, I wrote for DC too at one time. They were hooking that up, got me locked in with that. It came to a big, uh, my first tour. I twist my ankle the day before and then make it, and that was like the end of that. How long, how long your daughter's been skating for? Uh, the oldest is 13. Ting, how long you been skating? How long you been skating? Six. Six, yep. That's and then right. Demi, where Demi at? Never mind, the other one is nine. She just turned nine. Demi been skating since what? Something like six or seven years. She the youngest though. That's my little tiger. She she gonna be the you know that's the animal too. But yeah, the youngest you know what I mean because she learning everything super early. So I can't wait, man. Olympics, all that we got our eyes on. So my YouTube channel is The Harvest Tool 2. Y'all should have said it with me, duh. Like, what is our YouTube channel? The Harvest Tool 2. I am a father. I grew up without a father. Been in the streets pretty much all my life. Did everything y'all hear about in that rap song shit. I'm a legend in my hood, believe that. But skateboarding took me out, saved me. And uh, this is what I do now, you know. I, I, I give a damn about the streets. It don't make me no money. Don't make me sleep well. It's about my family, and that's what it's about. So like, what, where'd you skate at out, uh, out DC? Well, we were skating in the hood. I mean, we'd be right outside putting car tires and, um, when I started again, I was in Savannah Tours, you know, um, yeah. 22nd of Savannah, off of Alabama Avenue. Everybody knew me around there, knew I skated. Um, during that time, it was uh, pretty much dope was popping, like, you know, everybody walking around like zombies, you know, dope needles, hands all fat, elephant hands and shit like that, you know, yeah. that's what shooting dope. So it was a lot of that, and um, we used to just, you know, just try to find, like, the, the first beginning, we just used to knee and butt ball down the hill, you know, that's all we can do. And then finally, one of our parents, I think, worked in this area, and she told us about this place here. So she told us about Freedom Plaza, one day we all hopped on the bus. We came down here, this joint, man, it was love at first sight for me, you know what I'm saying? Because I was in the dark side, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so I, this was a breath of fresh air for me. It was like, yo, to come get on the bus and come down here and leave all that extra shit alone. This is what I wanted to do, man, just get away from the hood, man. It was, it was jumping, like, people think today, Today's, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm not glorifying nothing, but the, the violence today ain't got shit on what was going on back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it'd be silly, foolishness, a bunch of dumb, you know, mess. But yeah, I was reading like one of like your little documentary, John, uh -huh. and it said that, that you was what selling crack at like six or ten. I'm not ten. I ten? served like my first. You know, it wasn't really selling. It was just hustling. You know, like come here, little D. You know, blah blah. Went and hollered at him. He like, man, go. You know, go get us to the, and he let me keep the money. And that was kind of an introduction, you know what I'm saying? Because I was already kind of mesmerizing. You know, you wanted to be, because I lived in poverty, so seeing them niggas with the nice cars and all that, and you know what I mean, the nice shoes and shit, you wanted that, you know what I'm saying? My mother couldn't afford that. I real life was in Payless, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> real deal. I had cousins used to give me hand-me-down. One of my cousins was in the streets, though, so he hustled. So I used to get a lot of my shoes from him when he would give me shoes, you know? 
So what? So who got you wanting to start skating? At? Cause I know like a lot of people like in the hood they don't they don't be thinking about skating. A lot of people be thinking that skating is like white boy. Yeah, stuff, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I when I yeah. started, that's that's definitely what it was. You know, like it was like man, you doing that white boy shit. You know what I'm saying? Straight yeah. up, that's what they was like. I be fighting and all that shit. Don't call me no white boy. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it took me a minute. Um. And I, it, it took a long time, actually. I used to break my board down to get on the bus, put that joint in a plastic, black plastic bag. I'd be on the subway. I catch the subway right here. At, uh, what's this? This is Metro Center. Yeah. And my aunt used to live on uh, Capitol Hill, right there Potomac, by Potomac Gardens. So when I used to catch the bus, I mean catch the train, I'd catch it up there. And when I was up there, Potomac Gardens kind of mixed. Yeah, you got Potomac Gardens in that area, I'm going to say. You had Potomac Gardens, you had Kentucky Courts, and you had like 18th and D and all that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But that area was always surrounded by white people, so you can blend real well. You you know, I get right there, get my skateboard, I skate, I was cool, you know, I was out of the zone. Mm. But when you go across that bridge, Alabama Avenue and everything, that's when everything is straight, you know, gutter. Like, past Potomac Gardens, go across the bridge, you might get seen, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to get seen by, you know, my peers in the hood, because I already yeah. knew they was gonna say, nigga, you on a bus with a skateboard? That 32 bus used to come right here, I'll be right here, I'll turn my back every time. Hiding, bro. I, had, I put the ball right there. like nobody to see me, bro. Yep. I didn't want nobody to see me. And still people would see me. I bumped into it, so I had to go back to school and hear that shit. And it made me feel a certain way, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I struggled with that peer pressure. Because it forced me to kind of give it up a couple times. Yeah. But I always came back, man. I knew I knew it was going to happen. But like, who was you watching that like made you want to start doing it? Like, you had any well, favorite skateboarders? To be honest, the first getting to skateboarding, it was Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk? It was Tony Hawk. Yeah, it was straight Tony Hawk, and it was Tony Hawk because back in the day there was a go-go show that used to come on every Saturday morning yeah. called uh, Metro World. Ask the OGs about it. When by you know, the only the true go-go go heads know about this. It was called Metro World. Every Saturday morning, I would watch Metro World, and I would watch uh, oh Skate TV. It came on Nickelodeon, and this was a uh, illegal cable too. <laughs> My dad used to hook the shit up <laughs> outside. He used to go in the cable box and hook it up. So um, we, I would watch that every morning, and um, I would get hyped, but it was Tony Hawk, Justin G uh, Gerard, a couple other people, and I was always Tony Hawk. We'd go outside, we'd play that shit like, my car, my car, I'm Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk, you know what I'm saying? And we'd just skate, do our thing, didn't know nothing, try to mimic what they had, level gloves and shit, following what we saw. Yeah. And that was really um, in the beginning, and then down the line, I started to see mugs that look like me, you know what I'm saying? You saw your Stevie Williams, Kareem Campbell. Kareem Campbell. And that's when I knew Stevie though. See, I knew Stevie. I met Stevie down here. So when my mom and everybody, I mean, they, whoever told us about this place, eventually I got cool with all the locals down here. Stevie knew them too, all from skating. Like skating bring us together, you know what I'm saying? Met Stevie, Stevie came down here one day with them. And that's how I got locked in with him. And when he went back to Philly, like I was always checking up, like, yo, you know, asking my guys, like, how you doing and shit. And then seeing magazines, seeing them do his thing. Yeah. And that's what another thing that got me like, yo, but deep down, when I eventually, you know, I'm in the game, I, my, my career took off, like, super took off, probably about 22. I looked into it, I'm in the game. I'm around Big 3-0, that's where I'm from. I mean, I'm from the whole, I'm not gonna say, that's where I made my name for myself. But I grew up in Savannah Terrace, and then Big 3-0 is where I hustled at. Yeah. Anyhow, so, boom, doing my thing around there. I, I used to always stay locked in with looking at magazines and skate, looking, trying to see old people I grew up with. And one day I was just like, yo, oh, I seen a, uh, some footage of him or some of a photo, and he had like a Mercedes Benz or some shit, bro. And I was like, young, this nigga, like, I'm asking questions, like, this nigga doing it like this? So I'm asking my peers, and I'm getting in touch with people, and they're like, yeah, bro, the skateboard shit is it. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm like the 50 cent of the shit at one time. I'm like, nigga, I gotta get out the game. This, this gotta be it. And if he doing it like that, I know I can make a living. Yeah. Boom, that was it. I was sold, bro. I was like, you know, I'm gonna. Make a video, I'm gonna do everything I can. But well, it got it got vicious at the end. I mean I'm we talking shootouts, all sorts of shit. But for my last days of like really before I was on probation, all sorts of shit. I was jump out, chase me down. It was just time, bro. It was time, bro. And I mean, but God knew I was a good individual, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, well, I was a dog out there in the streets. There's two, like you have a hustler, and then you got people nowadays that they not they're not even hustling. They just, you know what I'm saying, they not getting money. They just standing out there, you know what I'm saying? It's just about doing dumb shit. We were getting money. All that Sabiato and all that shit, we go in there. My little brother, he locked up right now doing 10 years. Free yeah. my brother, free Dougie. Diesel Dougie, y'all know him. 
So yeah, um, doing ten. He he got ten right now. And um, you was rocking the sob. Sob, yeah. We were talking about the sob shit, bro. Listen, I used to have him fly going to HD Woodson. Trust me. Sob, iceberg. Actually, we weren't even really fucking with sob like that. It was more iceberg. Uh, Moschino, all that, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then the Saab, they started doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? Making their little suits and shit. And then we started getting a little bit, because we going to see RE, so we wanted every, you know, yeah, had the fresh threads, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was, but man, I can tell you stories all day. That's from us, man, the hoppers, man. Thank you, man, yes, I appreciate yes, you. Y'all see, yes, I got a sir. deck. And these available on DGK.com, y'all. Yes, sir. You see it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, too. Thank you.